Right now, they're celebrating the 200th anniversary for the town of Southport. It's going to be an exciting game. Now, we can talk about the players. We can talk about the games, how they've been doing all season. Over 20 years ago, First Arena was built to bring hockey and entertainment to Elmira. But after an IDA meeting this morning, the only people opening these doors might be demolition men. Yeah, I had to throw on the Beijing Olympics hat. I mean, I feel like I'm almost skiing out here. I'm going to give it a shot right now. We're just, you know, no pressure. My heart is saying Bengals, my head is saying Rams. Who do you have on Sunday? As the competitions begin to wrap up, Marielena, what are some of your favorite moments from this year's games? Richie Moran was a larger-than-life figure for Cornell and their men's lacrosse team. He had a 29-year tenure for the Big Red and won three national titles, including the program's first ever in 1971. After splitting a homestand against the Blue Jays, the Yankees heading to Baltimore on Jackie Robinson Day. Every player donning the special number 42 for a man whose impact goes well beyond the diamond. Two years ago, Horseheads native Joe Gilbert won it all, a Super Bowl championship as the offensive line coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 21-0. No, that is not the score of a football game I'm talking about. Corning Community College softball has won 21 straight games, and they did it in style. Steelers in the red zone looking for their first lead. Ben Roethlisberger finding Deontay Johnson, juggling it like a bowling pin in a circus, but he stays in bounds for the TD to the first. Josh Allen looking right, nothing. Looking left, nothing. Rolling out, slings it to Emmanuel Sanders with an incredible throw and catch for 28 yards in the game's first score. Cornell not going away just yet. It's Gennaro Pico, the drive and the finish. After our mental health special last week, we bring you the story of a young student athlete who battled with her mental health. Yeah, Morgan Rogers from Northern Virginia suffered in silence, but now her impact is spreading to colleges and universities across the country, including Cornell. This is her story. She was determined. She was competitive. She was strong-willed. Literally anything she put her mind to, she accomplished. There are not enough adjectives to describe Morgan Rogers, a daughter, sister, friend, and teammate. She was a member of Duke University's women's lacrosse team. The 22-year-old had her whole life in front of her. We kind of lived in awe of her, and I told her many times that I was just in awe of what she would accomplish on such a short period of time. Time which was cut short for Rogers. In January of 2017, Morgan endured a dream-shattering knee injury, an injury that left her feeling out of control. She spiraled into anxiety and depression. And in July of 2019, Morgan died by suicide. Today is her birthday, and I'm sorry, I'm emotional today only because of that, but normally I'm, I'm really good about this. I really felt like she needed to keep it a secret and keep it really quiet. She had plenty of resources available at her fingertips, but she didn't take advantage of any of them. Um, no one really forced her to either because we just, we had no idea the extent of her illness and, and how deep and, and hard it was on her until after she was gone. Her mother, Donna, left with more questions than answers. What went wrong? How did we miss all the signs? You know, kind of reliving the, the bad stuff versus the good stuff. But out of darkness, the Rogers family created Morgan's message. The goal is simple, helping other student athletes and eliminating the stigma surrounding mental health. So we decided, you know what we need? We need an education program. It's a peer-to-peer -peer group of meetings that these ambassadors hold on campuses about once a month. It's entirely, you know, peer driven. So a lot of it is just connecting with other people. So I think it's easy to um, associate your identity with who you are as an athlete. And that can be an amazing thing. But, you know, if you might not be performing as well as you want to be on the field or in the classroom, um, it's easy to have your mental health be tarnished by that. Now, Morgan's message is spreading. There are over 1,000 ambassadors at colleges and universities across the country. And so I'm super grateful because our team has been able to have different workshops this year where we were able to be vulnerable and share with one another some of the struggles that we've faced as student athletes. And there's a lot of comfort in that, knowing you're not alone. I'm very proud of the work that they've all done. Hopefully expands to more teams here at, at the university um, recognize the benefits from having these conversations. I mean, we couldn't ask for more uh, 
for anything more than to get these kids help if that's what they want. Give, encourage them to go get some help. coming down here for over 20 years. I've been coming here since 1998, missing only last year. For many NASCAR fans, coming to Watkins Glen International is like Christmas. Gathering in one location with friends and family to celebrate an event. After being canceled last year due to the coronavirus pandemic, these fans are like kids waiting for Santa Claus. It gives you like adrenaline, like hearing the cars go by. Yeah, it's, it's waking just, it's up amazing. for that in the morning. That's the, my alarm clock in the morning. It's yeah. hearing the cars going the around the track. Is... Like many others, Hopkins and Davidson met through their love of racing. Yeah, we met them down here. Yeah, I came here with my grandma. We met them here, and now we we're camping with them. <laughs> this used to this used to be their site, and then we bought the site from them, and now they're coming down with us. <laughs> Tracy Youngman from Rochester says the people keep her coming back. Um, there are people that we met 20 some years ago that we look forward to coming and seeing them every year. This is some place where you can go, you can root for different drivers, there's no fighting, everybody gets along. It's, it's kind of a cult if you want to say it, but it's great. Another commonality, everyone has their unique story of how they got into racing. I actually got into NASCAR because an ex-boyfriend looked like Jeff Gordon. And so I decided to start rooting for Jeff Gordon, and it kind of went from there. However, since Jeff Gordon retired, she'll be rooting for Chase Elliott. Reporting in Watkins Glen, Kevin Gefeller, 18 News.